presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. The award of course, in the same. Had enough? I didn't think so. Champion Roy Jones Jr. moves up in weight against three-time champ Mike McCallum, plus featherweight sensation Marco Antonio Barrera. Live Friday, November 22nd on HBO. You want it? You got it. Weakness as a fighter, Gil, is that he lacks a mean streak. Doesn't really have a powerful desire to hurt his opponents in there. You see that? <laughs> That's not the same thing that I've seen in his fights, Jim. He's one of the best finishers I've ever seen in boxing. He's a real mean guy in there. All right. Well, we'll be watching to see what Jones does with his relatively unorthodox style tonight. You saw the great jab out of Quarte. Jones doesn't generally have to throw too many jabs, often because he's just overwhelming his opponents, Larry, with power shots. But we've waited and waited to find quality opposition for Roy Jones, somebody who could really give him a fight. We haven't seen it in a long, long time. Can Bryant Brannon do any better than the Eric Lucases of the world and Antoine Birds of the world have been doing against Roy Jones? I, I think the trick perhaps with all Roy Jones opponents, but especially for this one, is to just have very low expectations so that if we do get some kind of competition, we'll be pleasantly surprised. Because he has limited experience, Brannon has to be uh, a, a, an underdog, a big underdog and an overwhelming underdog. But because he's a Philadelphia trained fighter, you know he's going to be tough. How tough? Well, 10 years ago, he got into a fight with a drug dealer, beat the drug dealer up after the drug dealer pumped five bullets into him, one of which went through an eye and is now lodged in the back of his neck. Another one is floating around in his body as well. That's tough. He's going to have to be that tough to bring out the best in Roy Jones. All right. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape now for Roy Jones against the very interesting Bryant Brannon. Brannon has an Adonis-like body. You're going to be impressed with his imposing physicality when he gets in there. Jones is three years younger, two and a half inches taller. They weighed in within range of the 168-pound super middleweight limit. And Jones has a two-inch reach advantage against Brannon. And now... Well, the rules of the bout, back to ringside cult figure Harold Letterman. The Roy jones Bryant brennan fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count, but in this fight, there is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 12th and final round. Jim. And we're told that the fighters have had difficulty making their way out of the tunnel from the dressing rooms because of the congestion in there. Forte and Carr going in. Brannon and Jones trying to get out. Now here comes Bryant Brannon. Five years in Rahway State Prison starting at age 20. He got both religion and boxing while he was in there. It's got to be the number one boxing prison in the United States, having also produced James Scott and Reuben Hurricane Carter. In fact, he was the boxing champion at Rahway, and that in itself is a worthy title. Before Roy Jones did his little song and dance in the ring before the fights tonight, I went in and visited Brennan. He was resting on the floor with a pillow under his head. He didn't seem very put out by the whole circus. So not necessarily ruffled in the way that Gil Clancy was by... Uh, <laughs> Just happy to be here, and why not? By our showcasing of Roy. And Brannon steps into the ring. He's from nearby Trenton, so he has a lot of local support here in the crowd. The record, 16 wins. He's unbeaten. 10 KOs. He won every round of his bout with Eric Lucas. Lucas is the guy you saw in the ring earlier this year with Jones on the day when Jones played a basketball game as well. Today, no basketball game for Roy Jones, just that meet-the-press appearance. I thought he did pretty well with that appearance. I'd like to see if President Clinton and former Senator Dole can do as well this coming Sunday night. Yeah, well, maybe they ought to get into some uh, debates like the one we're going to see right after the coming into the ring. That would really get, get us going on the election. I think even Clinton is a little old for that. <laughs> Some verbal fisticuffs on Sunday. We've got real fisticuffs here. 
And Roy Jones' record, once again, is the same as Ike Cortez was when Cortez stepped into the ring. Now Corte is 33-0 with 28 knockouts. Jones is 32-0 with 28 KOs. And some interesting punch stat numbers, Larry, that seem to show the degree to which opponents have a difficult time getting off against Roy's unusual style. Uh, his most recent opponents against Roy Jones have actually thrown roughly half as many punches as they normally do. Obvious reasons, Jones is a good defensive fighter and Jones' offense is so potent that their instinct for, for survival kicks in early in their fights. And Brian Brannon has been averaging 63 punches per round in his fights coming in. We'll track it as the fight goes on to see if his numbers drop, as has been the case for other Jones opponents. Now let's go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, Square Ring Incorporated along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This buds for you. Present 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Super Middleweight Championship of the World. Co-promoted with Pelts Boxing Promotions and sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission, Chairman, Olympic gold medalist and former two-time heavyweight champion, Floyd Patterson. Commissioners in attendance, Rose Trentman and Melville Southard. Deputy Commissioner in charge, Michael Pascal. First Executive, Tony Russo. Chief Physician at Ringside, Dr. William Lathan. Attending physicians are Dr. Richard Estrico and Dr. Rufus Sadler. The timekeeper is Jim Borzell. Counting for the knockdown seconds is Wayne Kelly. This bout is also sanctioned by the International Boxing Federation President Robert W. Lee Sr. IBF Supervisor at Ringside is Daryl Peoples. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Don Ackerman. Don Nodiger and Joe A. Ware Sr. And when the bell rings, the referee in charge of the action, championship veteran Ron Lipton. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the mecca of boxing, Madison Square Garden here in New York City, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, in the blue corner, wearing blue and red, and weighing 168 pounds. He comes to us tonight with a perfect record of 16 victories without a loss, and 10 of those are by knockout. Tonight, he comes to Madison Square Garden looking to shock the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Trenton, New Jersey, here is the IBF, number one ranked super middleweight in the world, the undefeated challenger, Brian B.B. Brennan. And his opponent across the ring in the red corner, wearing black and silver and weighing 147 and one half pounds, a 1988 Olympic silver medalist who now as a professional has 32 victories without a loss. 28 by knockout, and he has captured two world title belts. Tonight, he plans to demonstrate to the world that pound for pound, he is the best. Ladies and gentlemen, from Pensacola, Florida, presenting the two-time world champion and reigning undefeated super middleweight champion of the world, Roy Mark and Roy only. Okay, Muggsy, Bryant only. Okay. Gentlemen, you've been given the rules of the IBF. No matter what happens out here, respect each other, obey my commands, let's keep it strictly professional. Good luck to you both. We'll see if Roy Jones is more effective than those bullets that lodged in Bryant Brannan. Faster than the speeding bullet. Roy, you got to start in that corner. <coughs> Bryant, you ready? And there's a look at Brannan. All right. Roy, I told you, you ready? got the great physique. Hot! In 
see the muscles bulging as he races across the ring and launches a wild right to the body and Roy Jones stands in a peekaboo as Bryant Bradham throws about eight winged punches in a row. Well, that's a new strategy. Nobody's tried that that I've seen. Have you, uh, have you, Gil, against well, Roy Jones? He threw eight punches, but none of them landed. I guess if you fear something sometimes, the best way is to get right as close as you can. Yes, I did see this once before. Do you remember a guy by the name of McNeely that fought Mike Tyson? Yep. Well, he's keeping Jones from getting off to a fast start. Meanwhile, Roy threw one punch, but it landed. Now he lands another little quick left hook in there. A counter. As Brannon continues to pound away with winged shots from the outside, trying to get to Jones' yeah. body. Landed one good left hook to the chin on, of Roy Jones. Trying to neutralize one of Roy Jones' best weapons, which is his, his quickness of foot. Maybe trying to take away some of the punching power by crowding him, too. And he's catching some heavy shots inside from Roy Jones. I think he might be getting under Roy's skin a little bit, though. I mean, Roy hasn't seen this too often and probably doesn't like it much. He's been very calm, I think, though, Jim. Good left hook by Roy Jones. Oh, he rocked Brandon with a solid left hook, and now he's got Brandon wobbles. Here we go. Here we go. And I think the punch what? that started go, that go. was a left to the body that started that whole Again, combination. We mentioned that Jones was so calm weathering that storm, blocking punches, just looking to set the other guy up. And you mentioned, Larry, that the, despite the fact that Brandon was slow in punches, he was getting hit with some short, good, solid punches by Roy Jones. Well, in some instances, it's not how many you land, but how much they hurt. And there's that snapping left hook by Roy Jones again. And there it is again. Wobbles Brandon again. Brandon having trouble for the moment, staying on his feet, lifting, watching closely. Jones blinding Brandon with his overwhelming hand speed. He's getting hit with some solid punches, Brandon. Will he make it through the round? Well, he's holding up about as well as is possible under the circumstances. Got hit two solid body punches by Roy Jones. He's wobbling right now, Brandon. Looks like he might make it out of round one, but he's paid a heavy price for the privilege. And the not-so-terrific news is he gets to come back for round two against Roy Jones. That was a pound-for-pound pound round. <laughs> do, you, do you think that that was the same as getting hit with the five bullets, Larry? <laughs> well, those were bombs. Oh, these were, that's right. I forgot that. <laughs> hand, hand grenades. You're trying to, don't walk in without that jib. You're walking in without the jib. Let's see the first punch that started the fuselage of punches. And there you see it. Left hook to the left body. Left hook to the body. Just under the rib cage. Good eyes, Larry. Roy Jones often... There was the one that left hook right on the chin. Roy Jones often performs like a virtuoso jazz artist with incredible riffs coming, coming from all directions. Always unexpected. Well, again, there was, there was the Roy Jones left hook. That he, he never sets it up with a jab. He just comes in with it, but he's so quick. I've never seen a guy that can land left hooks from the outside the way Roy Jones can. He's Oscar Peterson with boxing gloves. Now Brandon's going to make this. Look at how calm Jones is in there. Hands up, blocking punches. Look, look. Well, Brandon's just pounding away at Jones's arms and gloves. I mean, at least it gives him the right to throw a lot of punches, which not too many people can do against Jones. But he's getting hit so much in return. He's nailed Jones with a couple of right hands. But again, it uh, doesn't seem to bother Roy at all. Uh, give Brandon credit for standing in. He's a hard man who's done hard time, and he's worked hard to get to this point. He's a very appealing guy. Wonderful personal turnaround in his life. 
kind of person you can root for. Jones in the first round after that relatively slow start when pinned to the ropes by Brannon's rush threw 102 punches. Again, they're wide punches by Brian Brennan, and Jones is picking them off with his arms. Easy to see him coming. They lose their power over that extended arc. Every punch is being blocked by Roy Jones. And he lets the guy throw his punches, and he says, okay, now it's my turn. Three, Let's look again. Three. He said Maybe he had a set. bullet lines okay. in his neck, Go. now he's got a bomb there. The Trenton crowd can't believe what they're seeing. They were so psyched for the possibility of Bryant putting up a big fight against Roy Jones. And their man is just getting hammered in there now. Ron Lipton watching as Roy Jones tattoos Brandon. And then Jones says, look, you want more? Okay. Convincing case. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. Awesome. You want to ask again who's the best fighter in the world? No, I don't have to ask that. So he stepped away and looked at Lipton as though he didn't want to hurt Brandon and said, must I do this? And Lipton says, yes, you must. And Roy says, okay. And he starts as the guy. How about that, Larry? Well, I thought a quali one of the qualifications for the best fighter pound for pound in the world is that a fighter has to be willing to fight anyone, anywhere, anytime. I question that about Roy Jones in his recent fights. But well, after a performance like this against a brave, tough guy, you know, we saw what we saw. There's nobody else who can do this. What an incredible gift. Yeah, you can't teach the stuff that Roy Jones does, Gil. No, I've, I've never seen, like, uh, triple left hooks, uh, seven left hooks in a row so quick and so accurate. I mean, it's unbelievable. And he just seems to have so much confidence in himself. Even when Brandon came out the way he came out, he di didn't bother him a bit. Stayed calm, picked off the punches. He's okay, now, I'll, now I'm going to show you how to do it. And you can see the amount of attention that's being paid to Bryant Brannon as the New York State Athletic Commission doctors do everything possible to ensure that Brannon doesn't leave the ring damaged. Second round KO for Roy Jones. No count necessary after Jones with one final flurry flattened Bryant Brennan. Now here's the first knockdown that took place in the second round, Gil. Now let's watch this. I thought it was a flurry of left hooks with a left hook as the decisive punch, but there might have been a right hand in there too. Left, little, left, left, yeah. boom. Left uppercut, double left hook, right on the button. How many fighters do you know that can do that? There is a left uppercut, left hook, left hook. I mean, absolutely, absolutely unbelievable. There's a new combination that he just invented. And each punch with power. None of them taps. And they're short to the mark. Now here's the second knockdown. This is after Jones has looked at... Now there he looks at Lipton. You see that? Yeah. What do you want me to do, ref? Oh, okay. Fine. What the heck? Boom. Here you can see Brandon doesn't have a leg under him. There's no reason why this fight had to go on. I mean, Jones could see it. I don't know why the referee couldn't see it. Beautiful left hook to end the fight. Short to the mark. I wish we could read lips and understand exactly what Roy said to Ron Lipton. I'm sure that Larry will ask him in the post-fight interview. And there's a guy that was an undefeated fighter. Good job, man. Yeah, that's right. 16-0 with 10 knockouts coming in. Obliterated in two rounds by Roy Jones. And once again, let's point out before we go back into the ring, Jones designated all of tonight's live gate money minus expenses. <laughs> Come on, hurry up, Christine. It's rare.
it may be unprecedented. And to me, the, to, what? to me, the most important punch in boxing is the lift jab. Well, not for this guy. Let's go to Larry Merchant. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Roy. Strong fighter came out, rushed you, swinging wild punches. What went through your mind at that moment? Well, I knew he wanted to come out and see could he, um, either he can take me out or make it happen quick, whatever was going to happen, he wanted to go ahead and see. First of all, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to come out and do all I do. Say what's up in Pensacola! And uh, thank, you, thank, thank everybody for supporting me. Thank everybody for helping out with this core thing and the police association and all. Were you surprised? How did you cope with it? Have you run into fighters that have tried that on you before to try to uh, either to intimidate you or to uh, uh, get you out of your game? Yeah, when I was amateur, that was the best way to try to fight me, was to try to blow me out of my game. But most of the guys quickly found out that um, that wasn't going to happen. I like this type of fight. He, All right. was there, he was screaming like, come on, Roy, come on, Roy. I'm like, hey, this is right down my alley. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the knockdowns. You describe what started the knockdowns in the first round. I heard him with a left hook, right? And uh, when I, after I heard him with the left hook, I knew I had him pretty much right there, I think. And I had him, and I could have speed up on him and hurt him a little quicker, but I didn't really want to hurt him. I just wanted to kind of land enough to get him down, but the hard-headed joker wouldn't fall. <laughs> so I just had to keep punching and keep punching, you know, so then he fell. Well, this was a charity night, and I guess... Your way, your way of showing charity. This is nice here, double hook. Oh, that's nice. Was to try uh, to get rid of him as fast it, it as takes possible. Some of the old fighters to go back and be able to throw a combination like that, son. That, I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that, dude. I mean, watch this double, up covered in a double left hook. Watch. Well, One. you're complimenting the old fighters Man. because not many of them can throw your their hands Man. as fast as you. Look at this. The old fighters, they were good. They showed me a lot, and I try to take everything that they used to do and put it into my modern day stuff and make it even better. You indicated coming here that you really wanted to put on a show, both I think for yourself, as well as boxing fans, as well as for New York in this fight. Are you sat? Why did you want to do that, and are you satisfied that you did? I wanted to do it because I felt as though I owe it to the public to put on the show as much as possible and as often as I can. I thought New York would be the best place since the thing happened with Bogolata last time. Kind of clean up the scene and show that just because sometimes stuff get bl gets blown out of proportion that it doesn't happen that way all the time. Hope to see you back in here soon, and not just for interviews, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, back to you, Jim. All right, thanks very much, Larry. What a tremendous performance by Roy Jones. As we were walking up here, Gil, we walked past Russell Peltz, the very excellent promoter from Philadelphia, who's the promoter for Bryant Brand, and he looked at me, he said, too much speed. I'm thinking to myself, speed? That's not all there is there. No, it's, too, it's too much everything. Speed power the fact that he's so cool in the ring he knows what he can do he has so much confidence in himself you can't take that away from him and the unorthodoxy of it all how do you prepare a fighter for someone who does not throw jabs doesn't need to just steps in befuddles you whirls fires power punches and knocks you out jim earlier in his career he was in with some pretty good fighters and in the first round sometime during the first round he'd land that quick jab and you could just see the surprise look come on the opponent's face like, my God, where did that come from? And he just showed that again tonight. I've never seen anybody else ever that can do that. Again, the basics of boxing, you set up everything with a left jab, not Roy Jones. All right, another great job tonight filling in for George Foreman Gill. Pleasure to have you with us. Took a little fall this week and hurt your back. I hope it gets better in a hurry. <laughs> Let's hope so, Jim. All right. <laughs> Larry Merchant, we talked about uh, the difficulty that Roy Jones faces in finding quality opponents who are willing to fight him. Uh, the number of fighters who have now been offered seven-figure paydays to fight Jones and who have recently turned those offers down, this ain't going to make it any easier. No, it isn't. And I think the reason is connected to what Gil was saying and what Angelo Dundee, the famous trainer, has said about Roy Jones, which is that he is the fighter of the future. And my interpretation of that is that he is a great athlete who can get away with doing things that are not in the textbooks about boxing. This is a kind of genius that, as Gil has said, is born into you and somehow it was nurtured, developed through the years with his father and he is taking it steps further. One story about Roy coming to New York. This has never been his favorite town. But the other day he was in a taxi cab and he drove by and saw on a wall a big painting of Michael Jordan. And he thought to himself, damn, Michael Jordan from Chicago, 
And here he is in New York with a 30-foot painting of himself. And he was telling this to a taxi cab driver and says, well, I've seen a bigger one of you downtown. And the cab driver drove him several miles down and showed him a 60-foot <laughs> picture of himself painted on to a giant building. And Roy said, this is my town now. Things are going so good for me. It's scary, but I think it's scarier for everybody else in any division near the super middleweight division. You, you suspect that 60-foot <laughs> portrait of Roy has now grown to 70 or 80 feet in the past few minutes? <laughs> Naturally, he's flexing his muscles on that building as we speak. All right, we don't know what happens yet in November. We're endeavoring to try to find an opponent for Roy Jones on November 22, but that date has not yet been made, and after what we saw tonight, who knows? whether we'll be able to coax one of the other super, uh, super middleweights, 168-pound fighters in the world, to take on the assignment of fighting Roy Jones. Well, we had one terrific 12-round battle and one overwhelming performance by an overwhelmingly great fighter. We'll be back to comment further on both of those ring stories. But first, let's turn our attention to some upcoming grind, and it's only on HBO. In the first of our World Championship Boxing doublehead of this evening, Ike Quarte remained unbeaten and retained his welterweight championship with a 12-round majority decision under over the valiant Oba Carr, the Motor City fighter who gave everything he had, didn't have quite enough to ward off Quarte's great strength and explosiveness. And then, Roy Jones, after designating the entire live gate minus expenses for two police charities, Congress of Racial Equality and his old buddy Gerald McClellan went out and destroyed Bryant Brannan, a quality opponent, in less than two rounds. Another knockout for Jones, the 29th of his unbeaten career. Coming up immediately following tonight's coverage of World Championship Boxing, stay tuned for HBO Comedy Half Hour, Adele Givens on the East Coast and The Net on the West Coast. So now for Gil Clancy, Harold Letterman, and Larry Merchant, I'm Jim Lampley saying so long from the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York City. The executive producer of HBO Sports is Ross Greenberg. Tonight's telecast of World Championship Boxing was produced by Rick Bernstein and directed by Mark Payton. The feature producer was Kendall Bridges-Reed. The associate producer, Adam Berger. Assistant to the producer, John Crystal. Production manager, John McCallie. And the technical supervisor was Bob Hunter. In a presentation of HBO Sports, the network of champions. The award of course, in the